Glutes engage, chin draws down towards your chest. That's what lifts your head up. You're holding that for four counts and then slowly lower down for four count. Release the glutes, engage them again, chin draws down. You're looking towards your toes and even probably feeling a stretch in the back of your neck because you're contracting the muscles in the front so much. Again, releasing everything, engaging the glutes, picking up your head, holding that for four, and lowering back down. It is fairly intense, and you definitely feel this in the front of your neck. If you don't, wait for the second variation. I'll show that in a bit. Here we're turning the head just slightly to the left and to the right, adding slight rotation, but the main focus will be to keep the head, the chin tucked and not letting that go. Otherwise you're losing the essence of the exercise. Here's a side bend. So one ear draws just a little bit down towards the same shoulder, maintaining the position of the chin and not letting that go. Here's the front view. Not a very flattering position to be filmed in, but just for you to see how small the exercise really is, I'm really trying to keep my chin in here as I'm slightly rotating my head to one side and the other. And here I'm showing you the side bend. Not perfect. I'm losing my position here. My chin is coming up. I don't know if you can tell. Try to avoid that. So here's the view while you're on your belly. Should you not be able to lift your head successfully on your back, this is a great option to um, practice and get stronger in the meantime while gravity is your friend and you don't have to work so hard against it. Second exercise, opposite arm and leg. So here lifts the right leg and left arm and your shoulder blade slides in toward the spine while you're pushing the opposite arm and leg into the floor. So one leg and arm, opposing arm extends and the other one pushes down into the ground for flexion. You could put a towel underneath your forehead for a little better head positioning. Be aware that you're not picking up the hip too much so your pelvis is rotating and uh, if you're using your jaw, your fingers, your toes, or your shin to help you with the lift. It is a pure glute and opposing latissimus dorsi exercise and um, we're making a gait pattern. Third exercise. My head is turning to the left. My left hand is sliding down with the thumb to my mouth. My opposite knee is gliding up and that same hand, so the right hand without leaving the floor, is gliding down towards my thigh. And then we're reversing the same direction. So arm, leg, opposing hand. The head turns, my right hand is sliding down, my left knee is sliding up, my left hand is gliding towards my upper thigh groin area on the left. I'm reversing with left arm, left leg, right hand, turning the head to the other side. Here I'm doing two limbs at the same time. You can play around with that um, and see that takes already a little bit of effort on your brain to figure that one out. And um, make sure you always turn your head and do the other side as well. Make sure you're not leaving with your uh, moving hand the floor. So you really have to internally externally rotate in your shoulder joint. So here I'm turning around and to show you a little better view of what's happening. Uh, one leg raises up as your other as your first hand slides down. And then the second hand is gliding. Shoulders rotating beautifully.
this is the a little bit more advanced version where two limbs are moving at the same time. And then I'm doing one where all three are moving together. Your head is barely touching the floor at this moment. So it's quite a bit of a belly exercise. And the faster you do it, um, the more challenging it gets. Now here's the most fun exercise yet. You're rolling on the floor. We're initiating first with one leg. We're using the glutes to pull us back and just letting the body flop over. You really no effort in the upper body here. And then the second variation after two times legs, you're starting with your arms. So here you have to really extend and pull through the back lat to pick you back up onto your back. So that is fairly challenging. Your head is lifting and helping. And I'm gonna just move a little bit away for you to see a little better view, have a better view. And um, yeah, notice how the leg is really initiating here. And try to make that landing on your belly as smooth as possible. I feel like I'm getting better here kind of my seventh or eighth roll already and the body is really learning and adjusting here. Last exercise, controlled rocking. My toes are tucked, my knees are wider than my feet, and my hands pull without moving towards my knees to create traction and tension in the lats. And notice how my back is not changing here. The further forward you rock, the more work your abdominals have to do. And you can do this on your forearms if your wrists are bothering you. And see how I'm trying to touch my nose almost to the floor. We'll do this four times and then slowly release that tension in your lats. Here comes the get up. My toes are tucked. Opposite arm and leg three times and on the fourth one I'm pushing myself up. 